what you got in there? In here? Doom. Hey kids, let's talk about Doom. Y'all know what Doom is. People say to me, they say, Pro Doom when, Zivvy? Actually, they say, where's Pro Blood Postmortem? I was waiting for End Blood to come out, and, and now it has, so... Soon. And since I wanted to do a video on Sigil, John Romero's upcoming whole new episode. It'd be a good idea to do Doom now. Now, you've seen Pro Wang, Pro Blood, Pro Postal, right? Pro Doom is gonna be different, because I'm way better at Doom than any of those games. Because it's way, way easier. Doom is in my blood. If I ever have kids, they're gonna come out circle strafing. Doom is the alpha, the omega, the original, one of the most important video games to ever exist. It's like Mario, but instead of plumbing, it's obsessive demon murder. I've spent more time with Doom than I have with my family. So while I'm probably gonna revisit it again for, say, Thy Flesh Consumed, or Doom 2, and certainly Plutonia, uh, but there are some ground rules here. One, we play on ultraviolence, the gentleman's way to play Doom. Two, while we are using a source port, GZ Doom in this case, we're using the True Color software renderer to get the most out of the dark areas and fuzzy specters. But what's the difference between the renderers, Civvy? You pedantic fu- OpenGL isn't the same, it's just not. It kind of muddles everything, you know, smooths it out too much. Three, we're not using Brutal Doom. We are using Smooth Doom's weapons, though. Not the enemies, because I think that's altering the experience too much, because the enemies in Doom, they have a certain way of telegraphing their attacks. You'll see it. And also, I had to slightly tweak the shotgun in Smooth Doom because the timing was off. Not to toot my own horn here, but when I booted it up and picked up the first shotgun, I noticed immediately that it was off and I had to fix it. Number four, no vertical mouse look coupled with Doom's original auto-aiming. Oh yeah. Number five, no saving. When I die, tough shit. It's back to the beginning of the level with nothing but your pistol. I'm excited. Six, I have to finish this can of Monster Ultra Zero Energy, which is easily the hardest part of this run. Okay. God, that's terrible. We're gonna kill the shit out of this meme. And of course, we start in the iconic E1M1 in Knee Deep in the Dead. Drink it in. When Doom came out, it was installed on more computers than Windows. I'm sure that includes the shareware version, which was knee-deep in the dead. I don't want to say that this is John Romero's finest hour. He only made seven out of these nine maps, and E1M4 was started by Tom Hall. But the ones Romero made are easily the best levels in Doom, and some of the most iconic and groundbreaking designs. You guys want to know why John Romero had an ego? Because he made the video game equivalent of Thriller. And on Ultraviolence, it's a first-time player's worst nightmare. Shotgunners greet you almost as soon as you start. They're the chain gunners of Doom 1. Bastard hit scanners, but it's not like in a build engine game where they start shooting you as soon as they see you. Up close, they can be deadly, but I'm not worried. It's funny because on ultraviolence you get a shotgun from them in the first room, but on lower skills you can't find one except in this secret. If you're stuck with the pistol, you poor poor bastard, here's a fun thing. The way Doom's pistol works is that it becomes less accurate when you hold down the fire button, but if you wait for its animation to finish and then fire again, your shots never miss. This is practically useless information because you will almost never use the pistol. And it's taken me longer to talk about this level than it did to play it. It feels weird explaining how these monsters work to people because it's so much simpler than, like, any shooter I've done a pro series on, which is why this is only one episode. All the monsters telegraph their attacks, it's a little less noticeable on hit-scanning enemies, but imps, pinkies, barons, cacodemons, cyberdemons, spider demons, and... Oh. Lost souls. That's the whole enemy roster. I didn't count specters because they're just black fuzzy pinkies. And you don't even see half the monsters in episode one. Imps throw fireballs. Get close and they claw at you. Treat with shotgun. 
If problem persists, treat with more shotgun. I bitched about how the timing was off in this mod on the shotgun, but it's important. This shotgun is the granddaddy of FPS shotguns, and it gets overshadowed by the absolute beast of a super shotgun in Doom 2. Still a great, powerful, satisfying weapon. Decent at long range, even. I forgot the pink demons don't show up until level 3, but when they do, they're right there. Three shotgun blasts, two if the RNG's on your side, and of course, stun locking with the chainsaw. All the monsters have a certain dance you have to perform with them, but killing them before they started is the best way to play. Chain gun all these zombies and imps, my fucking god, running through these areas and just massacring all of them. Ah, oh, it's beautiful. And then the game throws pinkies in there when you're doing that too much to be a bullet shield for the long range monsters and to corner you. However, they still telegraph their attack so you can just step out of the way, get a tiny bit farther away than their attack reaches. Here's the thing, I'm not thinking about this while I'm doing it. I'm watching this footage after the fact and explaining because this shit is muscle memory. Explaining certain areas in these levels isn't as important as in, say, Blood or Shadow Warrior, because Doom isn't that kind of a game. It's mazy. There are actually a couple of mazes that playing in software rendering will make more difficult, like this one in E1M2 that leads you to your first chainsaw, or... Oh, uh, you know what? Yeah, we'll get to Halls of the Damned. Episode 1 isn't easy, exactly. It's easy for me because I've played it a thousand times. It gives you a rocket launcher and a secret in the third level, and just so many rockets after that. There's still a couple of places Episode 1 nearly gets me, like this room at the end of Central Processing. Which I got too early, by the way, because these levels, there's a shortcut through here. Okay, but never mind. Here's this room, much harder to deal with in 1993. Nowadays, it's still a bitch and I prepare. It's too cramped for rockets unless you know this is coming. I can completely bypass this maze in Central Processing with the blue key and a super secret door. I mean, I'm still gonna go through it and kill all these guys. Computer Station is the most Episode 1 level of Episode 1. It is by far my favorite. It's packed with traps, monsters, non-linear hallways. This level is too good. It's that penultimate challenge before the boss level that throws everything at you. A+. Plus. Since I know where all the secrets are, and I mean all of the secrets, I have so many rockets to use. <laughs> I almost die, almost, because on Ultraviolence the sheer number of specters in this arena is ridiculous, but I get out and I win, and entering the Phobos Anomaly technically kills you, or ends the level when your health is below a certain point, signifying the Doom guy has died and is on his way to hell. <sighs> yeah, this is fucking terrible. Straight into Demos Anomaly. Let's talk about how Bobby Prince only barely avoided plagiarizing a bunch of metal and hard rock songs like ACDC's Big Gun, Metallica's Master of Puppets, No Remorse, uh, and also The Slayer, Pantera, you guys know. I can't do a side-by-side -side comparison because YouTube's copyright bots will get me. Anyway, if you're playing on lower skills, you may not even meet the Cacodemon here, because it's just a lost soul. Unless you find this secret with the plasma gun in it, which you should. Plasma gun is awesome, and I try to save as much plasma ammo as possible for the Cyber Demon, because, honestly, fuck that Rocket Duel stuff. The Cyber Demon doesn't take any splash damage from explosions. Okay, the Cacodemon. It's got a projectile you dodge and a melee attack you should never even be able to trigger if you're playing correctly. Six shotgun blasts, five if you're lucky. Or stun lock it with the chain gun or plasma gun or usually two rockets, but I avoid using rockets, especially when they're in groups because they tend to get separated and float away. Or just beat the shit out of it. <laughs> episode two and three aren't as good as episode one. They're fine, mostly. I even like containment area, with the crate maze and the first appearance of the Berserk Pack. If you're a zoomer watching this, a Berserk Pack gives you 100 health and amplifies your regular punch damage by a factor of 10 for the rest of the level, not just when your screen turns red. Really useful for saving ammo. I'm weird, so I like these huge open levels full of secret paths. Most of these maps are credited to Sandy Peterson and were started by Tom Hall. It's weird, because I don't know who to credit for this stuff exactly. Sandy Peterson made most of the maps in Episode 3. Tom Hall wasn't really interested in making a fast, brutal, shooty game. He wanted to go back to its roots like Commander Keen, because I guess he didn't like money and success and Ferraris and stuff. How does he have that same face? 
There was a lot of infighting when nobody was listening to Tom Hall's ideas, as if he was in some sort of position of authority there. So the two Johns, John Romero and the benevolent hyper-intelligent architect of the post-singularity simulation we all live in, John Carmack, fired him. And then they brought in Sandy Peterson ten weeks before the game was done, so keep that in mind when I knock Sandy Peterson's levels for being kind of trash. It's okay, everybody does it. Don't even get me started on the Doom Bible. Refinery is fine as a level. Another neat spike in difficulty where you've got four cacodemons sitting in front of you in a cage at the start. Barons of Hell start showing up more regularly. Nothing too difficult yet till you hit Command Center in a giant sprawling maze of a level that has some tough areas and even secret areas that you have to get to by going over Pit's toxic sludge like this one here where the Baron is in the cage. This is a pain, but here's the thing. There's plasma gun and a bunch of ammo here and you're gonna want that for Lost Souls. Lost Souls are the worst enemy in Doom 1. They're mediated a little bit in Doom 2 because the Super Shotgun 1 hits them, but here, I like to chain gun them, stun lock them, or if I have the ammo plasma gun, just to keep them from charging. I hate them. Don't use the rocket launcher because they'll get right up in your face and you'll kill yourself. They usually come in groups, like larger groups than you'd see later when pain elementals would show up, because a pain elemental can be put down before they spit out 10 lost souls. Not here though, they're all individually placed in the map, and this secret and containment area thinks I'm gonna chainsaw them. Command Center, right? Another secret exit in this one that's not too well hidden, relatively, since after playing this game for 25 years, you forget what a mess all of this is. Secret level is Fortress of Mystery, which is the worst level in Doom, no doubt, hands down. Second worst is coming up in Episode 3, but fucking Fortress of Mystery is awful. You start off surrounded by barons, then a room full of cacodemons and an exit room that's just doors you open to get keys to open doors to get keys to see this unpegged texture here for no reason. One of the problems in Doom 1 is how repetitive certain parts of it can get with the relatively low enemy variety, which I'm gonna sum up with this bit from Fortress of Mystery. The map I really want to talk about is the one that I have the most trouble with probably in the entire game, which is Halls of the Damned. One section of Halls of the Damned. And no, it's not the fake exit, that's fine. It's the one in the dark. Yeah, this one. I mean, yeah, you can find a few pairs of light amplification goggles on this level, but... Spawning Vats introduces you to the Invincibility Power-Up, which reminds me to talk about the Invisibility Power-Up. Okay, Invisibility, great for first-time players. A fucking curse for veterans. Because what it does is it makes monsters more inaccurate and they have a harder time hitting you, so muscle memory kicks in and you dodge right into their projectiles. But Invincibility, baby, yeah! An all-white god mode screen. What's better than that? There's more than one invincibility power up in spawning vats, so you can just run through like a madman, which you should do here. All this is starting to blend together, and I'm only an hour three of this now. Getting to the Cyber Demon, Tower of Babel, the infamous Tower of Babel, the pant shitting heard round the world in 1993 because we didn't know how to circle strafe yet. It's just that there's all these goddamn lost souls everywhere, and specifically, one of them blocks my path and boxes me in here, so instead of using the plasma gun, I have to rocket duel. Thanks, you little fucker, real nice. I could have taken him with three health. That's the only death in this run, by the way. The Cyber Demon is easy. He's big, he's mean, but once you get the hang of him, he's not a problem. He fires rockets and volleys at three, and you can circle strafe around him, you know, like this, and I get to be extra careful because of the lost souls getting in my face.
But oh no, Deimos floats above hell itself. So now you just jump down, I assume, because no falling damage. Or you repel down from that. Mmm. Oh god. This just tastes like citrus. It doesn't taste like any specific citrus. It tastes like, like artificial citrus. You know those Japanese sex robots they have? This is probably what their pussy tastes like. Straight into Inferno. Hell won't know what hit him. But also fuck this level from the start for making me pistol these caca demons. This episode is hell, by the way, the worst that Doom has to offer because it's time for the infamous Slough of Despair, where Sandy Peterson said, let's make a level shaped like a hand, and then did that, and it's Lost Souls, baby, and tight little spaces with pinky demons, and no chainsaw yet, and it's a little while before you can get to the secret plasma gun in this level. You will absolutely need it. Ammo's tight for a while, so much so that when I get... Oh, right, the Lost Souls. What a way to end the level. People gave John Romero shit for Daikatana, but Slough of Despair and Fortress of Mystery should earn Sandy Peterson a flogging. Pandemonium is better, thankfully, even if I run out of ammo and have to punch. Oh yeah, and also, we finally pick up the BFG. It's magic. Okay, I guess if you want something a little more detailed, the BFG shoots a big gray projectile that does a bunch of damage, pretty much nuking anything weaker than a monster they'd put at the end of an episode. But it's not done, because then it fires 40, 40 invisible tracer attacks, and if you fire it into another room, but you keep facing the same direction and it hits, and then the tracers go into the room that you're in, the BFG is absolutely overpowered. But if you're gonna call something the big fucking gun, you better deliver. Moving on, I don't entirely hate episode 3. I even like House of Pain's aesthetic in the early level. All this skin and gore and shit, this is good. Unholy Cathedral can fuck right off, though. Hey, you see this crudely drawn sign that looks like a devil? It means there's demons in there. This teleporter puzzle is bullshit. Three of them take you to the center and one of them takes you over here, but then you gotta... Oh, Jesus. I'm in the fourth hour now and even pros get tired and sloppy. These levels are getting worse. Like this last part of House of Pain is actual pain. Look at this, it's a hallway full of med kits with a damaging f This is dumb. This is dumb. Mount Erebus isn't bad, I guess, except this fire blue building. If you kids don't know what fire blue is, it's this. But then you get the secret exit to Warren's, which I like to think of as revenge on the first level because now I have weapons and a BFG. This was designed to use a rocket to, to blow yourself over there, but just stray front. Don't, don't use a rocket. Warren's just starts off as the first level of the episode until you get to the end and then there's a cyber demon. Blast him and forget about that invincibility. I don't need invincibility to beat a cyber demon. What I do need is to kill him, take all the rockets, use the invincibility, and just piggyback invulnerabilities while rocketing everything in the level, not having to worry about splash damage. Which gets me to this part with the missing lower texture. Fucking roll! Yeah, that's right, I raw doom. Suck it. I just want this to stop. Next up is Gate to Limbo, the most disappointing penultimate level in the history of penultimate levels. There's only 47 monsters, and the only thing hard about it is the fact that you have to run around over damaging floors to do a teleport puzzle. It's bullshit, and I only know how to do it because I've done it a thousand times. Now to the ultimate disappointment, the Spider Mastermind who could be killed with one BFG blast. I'm gonna kill everything in the level anyway, let's go. Because I'm not focusing my BFG blast, it takes four to kill the spider, which is weird. <laughs> Damn. 
don't marathon this shit because Doom starts high and ends low. Oh shit, I forgot. Ugh. Alright. We're done with the boomer juice. I'm irritable, my hands are shaky, but we're done. We're gonna do Thy Flesh Consumed another time, because I hate like 85% of it. And because I'll have to disregard Rule 5, because I'm not pistol starting perfect hatred 20 times. Fuck that. Fuck all of this. Fuck Doom. Doom sucks. I wonder if Sigil will be out on time. <laughs>